How long have you been on your phone today? Is social media rotting your brain? We're constantly asking questions like these, but just how worried should you be about screen time? Here's what the science says. There are literally hundreds of thousands of studies looking at screen time, and many of them have found links between using screens and a huge variety of health issues. It all sounds pretty bad. There's just one problem. Are screens causing these issues, or is poor health causing increased screen time? Or could there even be an unknown third factor influencing both? The vast majority of these studies can't tell you because they merely show a correlation between screen time and health. Identifying causation, the real impact screen time is having, is much harder. To get to the bottom of this, researchers conduct meta-analyses. Doing this, a lot of the harm seems to disappear. My favourite such meta-analysis, and yes of course I have a favourite meta-analysis, was conducted in 2019. The researchers looked at a huge data set of questionnaires given to teenagers, allowing them to compare the effects of more than 20,000 different factors on the teen's mental health. Crunching the numbers, they found that only 0.4% of adolescent well-being was related to screen use, a level of negative effect comparable to eating potatoes. By comparison, being bullied was associated with more than four times this negative effect, while getting enough sleep and eating a good breakfast were associated with much larger positive effects. So screen time is fine. Well, again, let's not be so hasty. These are still only correlations. One way to unpick the noise might be to ask what we actually mean by screen time. Watching TV, scrolling social media on your phone, playing video games, reading an ebook, or listening to a science journalist talking about screen time all involves staring at a screen. But would we expect them all to have the same impact on our health? Many studies don't take a particularly sophisticated approach to this question, simply counting up the number of hours spent looking at a screen. And to make matters worse, this data is often self-reported, which we know makes it less likely to be accurate. Come on, we all lie about it. Even if we focus on just social media, that encompasses so many things. A meta-analysis published in 2024 attempted to tease this out, finding small positive correlations between well-being and using social media for communication or having lots of social media friends. It also found small negative correlations with comparing yourself to others on social media or with problematic social media use. None of that sounds particularly surprising though, right? So where does that leave us? We could adopt the precautionary principle, particularly when it comes to children. We could heavily restrict screen time or even introduce bans for types of use. But I worry doing this could see us missing out on the benefits of screen time. What the data seems to be telling us, as much as we can glean through all the noise, is that on average, on a population level, the positive and negative effects of screens are small. That doesn't mean there aren't some people who experience much larger harms, those problematic users I talked about before, and we need to understand much more in order to help them. So how worried should you be about screen time? The answer is a complex one based on still evolving research. If you find screens interfering with your life in a major way, changing behaviour might be useful, as could seeking medical advice. For most of us though, screen use shouldn't be particularly high on your list of worries, and certainly not as high as headlines.